here with a lab staff, with a hidden backbone of the NHS. We process all the tests, we do all the diagnoses. It's not the doctors. We tell the doctors the diagnosis and the, diagnosis, the doctors decide on the treatment. Uh, this is the first time uh, in 26 years I've been working that I've gone on strike. This is the strike in November because feeling is running so high that they've got the cheek to try and take away our pensions when we've given our lives to working for the NHS and for the good of this country's health. Um, we're all very angry, we're all very committed and we're hoping that this will go all the way and that we will win. So, comrade Chair, Comrade RMT Executive have asked to salute every single worker that's out on strike today in the most principled strike that we believe is taking place. You know, We've only got a small amount of people involved in the Ministry of Defence pension scheme. Uh, those uh, seafarers that serve the Royal Fleet Auxiliary, the people that replenish the ships of the Royal Navy. And I can tell you there's seven ships around the UK today. Every single one of them is anchored down. Not one single person is operating on those ships there today. It's got... It's had such big effect on the Royal Navy that even the captains are complaining about going on strike if they may have to because someone's got to make their beds for them uh, today. <laughs> but how things change. 30 years ago, these people that are on strike today was classified as heroes when they was down in the Falklands War that took place. 11 of our members were killed in the Falklands War purely as servants working for the Ministry of Defence. Now they're castigated this morning by Francis Mould of doing something which they shouldn't be doing at all. I'll tell you what we should be doing. We should be taking action across Britain, not just PCS, UCS, Unite and other unions, but we should recognise the fact that this has got nothing to do with the questions about whether your pension fund is affordable or not. This is about turning back the tide on all the gains that we've made in the last 50, 60 years. We're striking today because the government's continued attacks on our pensions and, and all our terms and conditions. The, job, the, the, the uh, PCS campaign is about pay jobs and pensions. We've not had a pay rise for, for, for three or four years now, depending on what you but Some people who have been on the maximum scale haven't had a pay rise since about 2007. Five years. Five years. People who, people who weren't on the pay, pay maximum then were since 2009. Um, we've, we've, we've got to pay extra contributions towards our pensions. And those, those under 50 are being told now they have to work till 68 in order to get their to get their civil service pensions even though when they started the job they signed up for either, depending on when they started they'd have signed up for either 60 or 65 so our, our pensions have been eroded but this is not just about our pensions as civil servants this is also about the pension system generally uh, people in this country are retiring at some of the highest ages in in the civilized world i want to start with uh, with francis maud now francis maud is the cabinet office minister uh, some of us know him as the Minister for Chaos, the man, uh, the man who told people to store petrol in their garages, the man who, whenever the strike, whenever the occasion, says only 100,000 are out the night before, the man who's refused to negotiate properly at any stage, has told the media today, our strike is futile, they are not going to talk to us, and that we should just accept it. Now, I think we need to remind ourselves that this is the same Francis Maud who in December said there was only one union in Britain who opposed his pension reforms, and that was the PCS. Well, as we stand here today, that lie has been exposed. The majority of trade union members in health, in education, and the civil service have all rejected these unacceptable pension cuts. And our job, our job has got to be to say, that today is an incredibly important step to get this campaign back on the road, but the next strike we have needs to be even bigger with more unions involved to really show the government that we're not going away. When people say that we can't afford pensions, of course we can afford to pay pensions. The reality is what we should be saying is this. How do you get more money into the pension fund? Well, the simple reason is don't throw people on the dole queues, employ them, and they'll be working to pay more money into the pension funds. And the reason we've got to say to ourselves is why are we in this situation? Well, I think it is just worth, worth reminding ourselves of three things. We are working longer, paying more, and getting less. Just look at working longer. 
we will now have the highest pension age of any Western European country. And it's not just going to stop at 68. The government's annual review announced in the budget has already led to speculation that if you're a student today, you work till 71. If you are born today, you will work till 75. In France, they've just elected a president who wants to drop the pension age from 62 to 60. Vive la France, as far as I'm concerned. Let's have some of that here. They, they want us to pay more. They want us to pay more, although not a penny goes into anybody's pension pot, when the effects of their pay freezes mean that most public sector workers are 16%, 16% or less well off in real terms. I think we should say to them, if anybody should be paying more, it's the rich people whose tax you cut in the budget and those who are avoiding paying their tax in a legal way. Julie Goodman, branch chair, Palaces branch, Met Police Group. 68, it's too late. I don't want to die in service. But the reality in brothers and sisters is this. People have got to start waking up, and we've woken up here today. But the rest of the trade union movement's got to start waking up. This ain't just about pensions. This is about an ideological attack on every working man and every working woman in this country. And we've got to start saying that we next day of action should be, which is going to be called in October, understand by the TUC executive when it meets in May, should not just be an attack, a demonstration on pensions, but we should start looking for a 24-hour strike on the effects of austerity against everyone, whether they're working in the community or working at all. The government is swimming against the tide. All across Europe, where people are asked, they say, we don't want austerity, we don't want to pay the price. It is the rich people who put us in this mess who should put their hands in their pocket. Isn't it incredible that in Greece, left-wingers who went to the electorate, who don't believe they should be paying back their debt, who stand against all the austerity, were asked to form a government? Brilliant news from Greece, 15 general strikes. Now they're electing people who want to challenge the financial markets. It should give us all heart. And in France, we've elected a socialist president in France, not particularly radical, but what does he say he wants to do? Cut the pension age to 60, tax those on a million euros a year at 75%, and make the election about challenging the markets. And in Britain, in Britain last week, people went to the polls, and whatever they did, they voted to say, we don't want the coalition, 850 casualties for the Lib Dems and the Tories. So we know the tide is turning our way. Austerity is not working. Cuts are making things worse. Attacking our pensions, our jobs, and our communities is the wrong answer, and we've got to stand up and fight against it. Well, I'm here for the PCS and the Radio Young Members Officer. And after the PCS have been out there for about in the third day running in the patient dispute, we've already got industrial action going across multiple groups. We're going to pay privatisation, job cuts, you name it, we're being hit in every single way possible. And this dispute is going to go on and until we stand up and fight back. It's the government determined to, just, to destroy the public sector, to privatise as much as they can, to destroy our terms and conditions at any cost. Now, you're going to be able to defeat that if I stand together fighting back. We've got people here, the PCS are happy to see you unite out alongside us and now we've been put, we've been talking to Gearson, talking about other unions, there's great news about the POI, there is almost unity amongst ordinary people about what's going on here. They will see what's better what's happening, they can see what's happening to our pensions, they can see what's happening to the pay, the disastrous consequences we're having. We're attacking all the working people to pay for a banking crisis, to pay for the financial sector that caused all this and to continue to pay for tax cuts for the rich. That is where the money is. That is what we need to pay for our pensions. It's an absolute disgrace when we have the third highest pension of poverty in the whole of Europe that they're turning around and saying to us, we've got to cut your pensions. Which leads me then to the final thing I want to say, which is where do we go after today? Today has been absolutely brilliant. 400,000 people on strike, putting this campaign very much back on the road, centre stage in the media when the government had told people the game was up. But I think we've got to recognise that we've got to move on from today. 
That means that in my view, and I will argue next week at the TUC, that the time has come again for the TUC, representing the majority of trade unionists in the public sector, to demand the government reopen talks on public sector pensions and tell them if they don't that there would be more campaigning. And that leaves me, therefore, with this thought. Going on strike's not easy. People in this room are on poverty pay, struggling to make ends meet, worried about their jobs and their pensions. But we have to, I think, reaffirm today that the alternative to fighting is to lose. It is to work longer, it is to pay more, it is to get less, it is to continue the hundreds of thousands of jobs that are being butchered in our public sector. It will see a continuation of people in the private sector being told your pension should stay low because now we've cut those in the public sector. Or the alternative is to say this, I want to tell my kids and I want to tell the people in my community that when the time came, when the going got tough, we stood up, we fought, we told them we're not giving away things we fought for over generations, and if they don't make concessions and talk to us, we will do it again and again, because losing will be something we will regret forever. Thanks very much, comrades, and good luck. On fantastic news this morning, we're hearing that there are thousands and thousands of prison officers that have walked out the prisons of Madonna County, have just come from Brixton Prison, there are 70 pickets on the picket line, there are, there are UCU members and PCS members going to give them support, Wilmot Scrubs have stopped working as well, all unofficial, all to protest against the attacks on pensions. Brothers and sisters, we just can't take this action and walk away. We've got to start building it up. We need the teachers involved, for whatever the differences that might be. We need other groups of workers involved, but we need the entire trade union movement to link up with the communities and all of the people, whether they be pensioners, whether they be disabled, those people un 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 at the moment unable to work and seeing the real attacks being made by these austerity attacks come together and we should combine. Why is it if they can take general strike action in Greece and in Spain and in France, we should turn around today and say that we're going to take it in Britain to defend our generations in the future.